Hello and welcome guys, Leon Street here. If you're new to my channel, you're new to watching any type of video of mine, make sure you subscribe, like and comment below this video. Today I'm talking about how to avoid a business meltdown and achieve success this year. So this comes off the back of me creating a blog recently and more to the point, it's one of those end of year blogs that I was kind of sat down looking at and it wasn't really a blog that I started out with it was just me reflecting on my year and the kind of things that I'd accomplished and what I wanted to do going forward into the new year and off the back of it I was sat there in a coffee shop Costa Coffee to be specific and it wasn't that you know it was that coffee shop that I had to be in or there are other brands out there but the point I wanted to get to is that I was sat down in my coffee shop and I was looking at, well, what kind of things would I focus on if I was helping more of my type of client, my type of audience? And so I went through the key areas of what I believe makes a difference or has made a difference to me. It's made a difference to my clients in terms of being a success for you this year. At, at the time of recording this video, it's at the end of 2019, but here's the key point. It doesn't matter when you choose to act on what I'm about to share with you. There are 18 steps. These 18 steps are not linked to any type of time, so they're not time dependent. It's all about you and how you are a success in your business. So I hope you can take from it some of the insights and what I'm gonna do, this, this video is gonna be quite a mix because I'm gonna be speaking to camera just like I'm doing now. And I'm also gonna be referring to the actual blog that I wrote. I put the blog out just a couple of days ago and it received a lot of great feedback. People reached out to me sent me private messages. You know what? I always find this amazing and it always astounds me. People read your stuff, see your stuff, and not everybody comments, not everybody likes, not everybody interacts. And I'm really appreciative and I'm grateful actually for the people that actually, they don't like, they don't comment, but they send me a message. That, that is really cool. The last message that I read on this post today, in fact, was somebody saying, you know what, Leon, I really loved your 18 steps post about what to do to be a success in business going into the new year. And I look forward to working with you in the new year. And for me, that's a big thing. So, you know, here goes more customers in 2020 and beyond guys. So if, if you've got any points or comments you want to raise, remember drop them in a comment below this. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. That's the last action I'm going to give you as we deep dive into this content now. So I'm going to go into parts of the blog and then as we kick off, we'll go through each of the 18 steps. So first of all, let me kind of just pre-frame you. So I was in the coffee shop and I was looking at, you know, what is it that I've, I've really come to realize? And it doesn't matter about success or what experience you have. You can still feel overwhelmed in your business. And it's the, the point I'm getting to is that nobody is exclusive from any of this. So you can feel overwhelmed. You can feel self-doubt, frustration. It can even be lack of clarity. It's kind of like, let's say the previous year was amazing and going forward, you don't know what you're really focused on. And, you know, Everybody at some point will succumb to this. Nobody will kind of be impervious to this, even when you know what must be done. So sometimes you feel these things and you're like, but I know what needs to be done, but I feel kind of like just lost. So anyway, so what I want to look at really is everybody, you included, me included, we're all at different levels of our ego. And you might be watching this as a business owner thinking, hey, Leon, you're going to give us 18 steps. Why are you talking about ego? I'm talking about ego from the point of view of something deeper than, you know, somebody showing off and bravado, all that kind of stuff. What I want to focus on, I want to get scientific with you for a moment, just so you can see the facts that I'm about to share with you. So we're all at different levels of ego. And the part of the mind, really, the ego is the part of the mind that protects us, but it also mediates between the conscious mind, which is only 5% of the mind, and the unconscious mind, which is 95% of the mind. If you want to look these facts up, you can probably find it on Google for the actual source. But this is what I researched. 
So when you think of that, the conscious mind is what you're consciously aware of. It's kind of like awareness now, but your unconscious mind actually does much more. That's why it equates to 95% of your mind. So for instance, you don't consciously think about breathing or getting your blood circulated around your body. It just happens that way. It happens that way because your unconscious mind is what takes care of those things. So if we think a little bit more than just ourselves, let's say, it became obvious to me that you know, you guys are probably in a similar position where you're thinking, you know what? Yeah, actually these things happen to me and I would like to go deeper. And the reason why I start with ego is because ego is the key thing that holds us back because it replays programs from the mind and that's what will determine your level of success dependent on how you communicate with your ego and create new pathways in your mind for you to go on and achieve new things and be a success this year. So, if you're anything like me, a lot of the time my awareness only kicks in sometimes by my own senses or unless somebody's pointed something out to me, I'm like, ah, great idea or ah, I didn't think of that before, maybe I should. So, you know, a lot of the time life can often feel like maybe there's something missing, maybe there's something I can't quite put my finger on and if that's you, this is the time of the year usually towards the end of the year where people do start thinking about new year's resolutions new goals you know doing better than last year or actually just doing something you know if maybe you've had a great year maybe you just want to even do even better going into the new year so for me the key thing is how will you ensure that you'll be a success going forward into this year so let's kick off here are the 18 steps and you know as as we go through this if if there's anything that you don't agree with you know what the biggest thing for me is that that's okay I don't mind, but here's what I do appreciate that you guys interact and we get into this. So here it is. Step one is vision. So when I'm talking about vision, I'm not just talking about what you see. I'm talking about what you see without your eyes, kind of like what you think and you imagine and dream about your life to become. So what you dream about your life to be. And I use the words dream because some people will recognize what the word is dream, uh, vision, but not everybody will get it. So if you think about what is your wildest dream for your business, what is the wildest dream for how your life will pan out? That's what vision is all about for me. And vision, it comes from this place of creativity. And when I say creativity, it's to do with how you think beyond where you are now because if your wildest dreams weren't anything more than where you are right now then you're not using your vision yeah you're not tapped into something greater than where you are so if you're going for something like a goal a dream your purpose uh, a why like simon sinek spoke about in his book start with why that doesn't feel right from both a gut feel or so what you know will at least have some meaning for you or a positive effect. It's probably because you're disconnected to something that's bigger than who you are right now. Yeah, because usually when you have vision, you're thinking something way bigger. So regularly, what I do is I use tools like meditation because this allows you to at least find clarity. And you've got to find these moments of clarity so that you allow yourself to connect spiritually to either your soul, if you believe in that you have a soul, um, if you think about martial arts, they refer to their energy as their chi, yeah, aka the soul, or it could be the universe. You know, if you just think, oh, I don't really believe in God, maybe for you, your, your uh, universe or chi or soul is connected to God. Maybe you are a religious person. There's no right or wrong here. What I'm saying to you, though, is meditation or even prayer is a way that you can clear your mind and I'm, I, I'm not particularly a religious person but what I do believe is in a higher power, higher energy of what we are here to do. You know it's not like, uh, and I don't want to get gruesome or gory here but you'll kind of understand my personality, it's not like when you chop your arm off you know people become any less of a person in terms of their ability to see vision, to make change and do amazing things. There's a lot of people who have a disability or have had some kind of injury and they continue. So the point is is that you've got to think bigger than who you are as a human being. You've got to go more spiritual and a lot of people don't do that because we live in such a touchy-feely world, you know, smartphones, laptops, all that kind of stuff, and they disconnect with the world. But your job is to actually find moments of clarity, and meditation will allow you to do that. It will help you to mute out the noise of the day-to-day, -day. also your ego. See, the thing is, what can happen is, you can end up with your own misplaced 
low self-worth or even guilt, you know, and we all have it. Sometimes we think, oh, I should have spent, you know, more time with my partner, my wife, my husband, my children, family, or I haven't seen my friends enough. And these are the things that you've really got to look at. That's your ego talking. It's kind of, you know, is that the truth? Is that a real big problem? You know, should you be feeling guilty or should you simply just make change now? Yeah. So this is how you can look at yourself in terms of going for what you want through your vision rather than your ego. So it's, it's essential to raise your awareness on your own unconscious misbehaviors because they're the things that will really hold you back. So you connect with what's possible for you. You hear a lot of people talk about your potential. You know, that, that man has such great potential. That woman has such great potential. That's what it is. Your potential is the thing that you have to unlock. Otherwise, it remains potential. And we all know what potential is. I'm sure you do. It's energy. That's all it is. So not from your ego, from your higher vibration, your higher energy. So knowing and being able to shift from survival to creativity is critical. And most of us are blind to it, unfortunately. And that's one of the biggest things that we have as a challenge because we're not looking at ourselves from actually we're holding ourselves back. It isn't, do you know the latest tactic, strategy or whatever it is. It's us ultimately. So if you only ever think you're only part of the physical world, I'm going to share a fact with you. It's going to blow your mind. See, you have to face up to the facts that, you know, this is a real world, but just know this fact. Science shows that we're physical bodies made up of systems like the nervous system, which is made up of cells which is made up of atoms, and atoms are made up of 99.999999999% energy. And they're also made up of 0.0000000001% mass. So what science shows us is that us human beings, yet yeah, in this world, that we're actually essentially made of nothing materially with energy and that you need to tap into your energy, your soul, your chi, your universe, rather than your, what your basic senses tell you about what you're going for, because your basic senses can't go beyond what they are. Yeah. So that sight, sound, touch, feel, taste, smell. So if you're going to think bigger than that, it has to go beyond what all those senses are telling you. So the first step is vision. So if we're gonna go beyond the first step, we need to go into step two, who you must become. So this is a big one for me because I remember quite regularly, I, I used to do goal setting and focus on what it is that I wanted to achieve, but it was always external. What I never focused on was who you must become. See, when you go for goals, you can't be the same person at the end when you've achieved something because you've got to grow. It's kind of like an Olympic athlete before they win gold medal. They have to compete. They have to go through the, the trials. They have to go through regional championships, country championships, and then international championships. And that leads them ultimately to get into the Olympics. They grow. They become better. They improve. They grow internally. Their mindset changes. Physically, they change. They become better. So when you're going for your goals, and if you you want to be a success you've got to set goals that go beyond just thinking smart precise you know clarity down to the penny or the millimeter usually most people focus on everything that's external to us but what you've got to do is focus on who you've got to become because the same level of thinking that got you to where you are the same personality of got who got you here so i.e you won't get you to the next level you have to evolve and you cannot be the same person so a lot of top performers, entrepreneurs, successful people that we look into, they use the concept of the alter ego. And that's what this is all about, your alter ego. And I'll share some things with you. You see, the alter ego is that so that they, they use it so that they can embody a new persona they grow into over the course of their journey. So here's some examples. Beyonce Knowles, her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. Colby Bryant, famous basketball player, the Black Mamba. Martin Luther King Jr., the distinguished self. So he would transform himself into the distinguished self. Margaret Thatcher, she became known as the Iron Lady. That was her alter ego. Muhammad Ali, his alter ego was the greatest. He was the greatest before he even became world champion. And you've got Bruce Wayne, my personal favorite, Batman. So 
the whole point of having an alter ego is so that you can choose, here's an example of how you can do it, choose three to five people you admire and pick the personality, attitude, attributes or traits that you like about them that you can adopt going forward, yes, yeah, so that you can adopt and use. Then from this point of uh, view, the whole point from this point forward is that you can embody those traits. Eventually your alter ego will merge into your true persona and you will be the person you want to be. That's the key here. So step three, step three is plan of action. So plan according to your vision. Yeah, don't plan and think, ah, but you know, this is slightly different to what I see in my vision. You've got to plan according to the vision. This is about knowing your end result, what you do want to achieve, but not necessarily how it will happen, yeah? So a lot of people get obsessed with, oh, here's the exact steps of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, you know, make one pound a day, and then it's gonna double every day, one pound, two pound, three pound. No, it doesn't work like that. You don't know the exact how, but we will get on to now the exact plan. So you've got to make a plan that will at least keep your focus on track, keep your focus on track. So work from a 12 month plan. So include life, include family, social time, time alone, holidays, work. You need to see the whole picture of your life, not just your business. And I'm sharing that with you so that you actually enjoy your life. You then chunk it down to four quarters. That simply means four 90 day periods or th um, four three month periods. Split it into months. So split each quarter into months. So then you'll have three months when you look at each quarter and then break those months down into weeks. And for each day, what three actions can you do that will bring you closer to the end result that you're going for? That's how you chunk down your year. If you put more in, you'll hit overwhelm. So only go for three actions per day or focus on tasks that are a priority as opposed to tasks that are maybe urgent but not a priority. See, a lot of the times you can get caught up in urgent and busy stuff, but actually you've got to focus on what are your top three priority tasks every day, chunk it down, break it down, and you will edge your way closer to your end result by the time you get to the end of the 12 months. Okay, step four, environment. So environment, your environment will either help you or it will hold you back, plain and simple guys. This is both your internal environment and your external environment. So here's what I want you to think about as we go through this. You see, the environment is, is one of these big things where internally it will all revolve around what you take in. So this is self-talk, mindset around when you find success, when you encounter problems. This will be the point when you fully embody your alter ego because when you find success, maybe you go into, I don't know, bravado, showing off and you actually go to another extreme rather than being humble. Maybe when you hit a challenge in your life, maybe you become you know, withdrawn, depressed, anxious, you know, worrisome, overwhelmed, many different things, but you have to embody your alter ego at both ends of the spectrum because when you've looked into those personality traits, characteristics of who you choose to be when you're in your alter ego, you will know how to manage those emotions and challenges or even exciting times much better so that you don't go into extended periods of elation and, and forget to work and continue doing the work. Or maybe when you go through those challenging points, you don't go for extended periods into emotions that are gonna be negative and hold you down. So this is where you're, you, you've really gotta embody the alter ego point of what I've already revealed in this video. So the next thing is that we looked at internal, but then when it comes to your environment, you're gonna look external, what's going on around you. So external will be regularly taking yourself out of poor surroundings or planning time in places that energize you. You know, th this is something that I'm guilty of not doing enough. I get focused, 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 but I don't go to places that energize me enough. And that's one of my big ones going into this year. So spend less time with toxic people. That's highly important. Um, those who always tell you not to aim so high, those who impose their own limitations or offer unsolicited advice with no experience in what you do, or those who bitch and moan, 
yeah, about life, never really doing anything about changing their own. And these are who you should be wary of, yeah. And unfortunately, there can be family, there can be friends, and there can be employees. So if you're experiencing that, just be mindful of these types of people. So choose to be around positive people who lift you up and they think like you, they, they have this growth mindset. So create new social circles if that's what you've got to do. Um, or people with a growth mindset who demonstrate grit, determination, love, empathy, integrity, values that align with your own core values. Okay, that moves us on to step five, distractions. So in this day of smartphones and constant updates, notifications, you know, distractions are only an arm's length away once you grab your phone. So probably just over two years ago, I remember on my own phone, changed the settings, turned off all notification sounds, turned off notifications that pop up on the screen as well, especially when your screen's unlocked. Um, I just had enough. And, you know, one of the biggest things that in you being a success is not being distracted, not kind of getting to the point where you've just lost 15 minutes or you just lost another hour scrolling through social media, um, maybe lost on YouTube watching videos that suggested videos. You know, these are things that will keep you away from you being a success. You've got to learn also to say no to new opportunities or moving past the feeling like, ah, I'm going to miss out if I don't say yes. You know, fear of missing out, FOMO. And the reality is that you don't have to pursue every new thing that comes to you. So by saying no, this will help to free you from distractions and those really great ideas. So the more that you focus and commit to your own vision and goals, the further you will progress. A simple formula to use in deciding if the new idea or opportunity is worth actually pursuing is this. Two questions. Does it take you closer to your vision? Yes or no? Does it require more of your time to the point where it will impede on your original plan? Yes or no? If you answered yes to those questions, I'd simply say throw the idea away. Your job is to go deep on what you do, not wide. There's a saying, follow one course until successful. Focus one inch wide, one mile deep. Go do that, guys. So, Moving forward, step six, skills. So if you're gonna be a success this year, you've got to focus on skills. So what am I talking about with skills? Take a self inventory. So, you know, go through yourself and use the key areas of business and rate yourself in sales, marketing, operations, and finance. So what are you good at? So list your key skills. Just get a sheet of paper, write them all down. What are you good at? So what are you weak at? That's step number two, second question on your self inventory. So list out the things that you're weak at or dislike doing. Usually the tasks that keep on appearing on your to-do list that never get done, that's a sign. Those are the weaker areas, things you don't enjoy. So if you've got a team, get them to also rate themselves and you should also rate your team because you know what? Sometimes people can rate themselves higher than they actually are. So you know it's a good idea to rate your team as well. Um, now you know your weaknesses and the cool thing about this, you'll know your strengths and you can begin the process that follows in some upcoming steps where I talk about leverage and structures. Right then, so we are moving on to step seven, products and services. So products and services, very straightforward guys. If you're in business, get clear on what you offer. Think less is more, that's the key thing here. So specifically, what three products or services give you your most profit? Yeah, that's where you've got to be focused here. It's better to focus on less than try to be the solution provider to everyone and for every problem they have. That's not you. So outline the end result your products will offer. That will give you focus on what those three products do. So step number eight, target audience. Again, very straightforward but important. You must be really clear on who your target audience is. So you've really got to focus on they, them, knowing you know them better than they know themselves. So I'll say that again. You've got to focus so much so on your audience so that they know that you know them better than they know themselves. Usually, 
This comes from focusing on something in marketing terms called a niche. Get clear on why they will buy from you yeah, and the desired outcome they're looking for. If you focused on the previous step where we looked at products and knowing the desired outcome or the outcome that those products offer, you can now see if your products align with your target audience. A lot of people know their niche to be demographics, kind of logical attributes, but most people don't answer the questions on why people will buy from them. The, the reasons why people will buy from you is an emotional reason. That's why I'm saying focus on those areas because that's what's going to get them to buy. So, Step nine, lead generation. If you're in business, you gotta get leads, no leads, no customers. Focus on one source, getting one source to work. You're probably watching this video now, maybe on YouTube, maybe on LinkedIn, maybe on Facebook. I started out by focusing on my business on Facebook. Then I got leads coming in on Facebook. Then I focused in on LinkedIn. I had leads coming in on LinkedIn. And now I've expanded onto YouTube, although I've been on YouTube there or thereabouts for some years now on different channels that I had, but I'm really coming back with my own brand, Leon Street, and really pushing that forward with the great material I'm sure you're watching right now. So focus on one source and then move on to the other. And here's some key points on this, where you generate leads, prospects, and clients. That's how you know it's working. So then you do more of this until you hit levels that achieve consistent results, not until you think it's working, until the results show. So now expand to the next source of traffic. Don't jump to another source too soon. If, if, especially, if it's at the expense of an already working marketing channel or traffic source. Yeah, don't abandon it. Step 10, structure. So structure I'm talking about here, to move to the next level and to be a success, you need to have structures, systems, or processes in place that support your new way of life and business, yeah? Your business goal is this, to have a commercial, profitable organization that works without you, yeah? That is the statement, that's the quote. So if you're gonna set up a commercial, profitable organization that works without you, that means you're gonna have processes. Think McDonald's, look at how many franchises they are. They follow a simple model and process that was created by Walter Crock many years ago and has since been evolved. Systemizing your business and removing those processes that are dependent on you or a team member in your business where the knowledge is in somebody's head, aka you being the bottleneck or the person being the bottleneck to the growth of your business will help you to hold yourself and your team to new standards and support your growth. That's the key thing about structures and systems. Start by documenting things, maybe in a Word document, Google Doc, uh, with print screens, steps one to 10, that kind of thing, or even record videos of you know the whole process. That will help you to start systemizing. So when you have new team members, it will allow them simply to do the training that they need to know to be skilled or upskilled up to what they've got to do. And it helps you produce predictable results. So moving on, step 11, leverage. So if you've got systems, leverage must follow. So if you're going to succeed in business, understand this basic formula, time, money, and quality. To have one of those requires two of the other. So if you want time, it's gonna take more money and quality. If you want money, it's gonna take more time and quality. If you want quality, it's gonna take more time and money. So let's look at this, just dig a bit deeper. To have any of these three outcomes takes two of the others. So investing in a team, systems, and improved quality will create more time for you. Yeah, so be clear what you do have to invest in order to get as an end result. Investing in time and quality in your business will create more money. Investing time and money in your business will create better quality. So creating systems will create leverage, basically allowing you to get more with what you already have. That's what leverage is all about. So building your team to run those systems, those structures will give you more freedom. That's what you're looking for ultimately as a business owner. So start out by hiring people for your weaker skilled areas. You know, the ones that you did as a self inventory and your team did as an inventory earlier. So tasks that are usually that you'd pay somebody $10 an hour, 10 pounds an hour, that kind of thing. Then also move on to the $100, 100 pound an hour tasks while you focus on the $1,000 and $10,000 or pound per hour tasks. 
that's how it works very simple that's how you scale and grow your team so step 12 the unknown sounds a bit spooky i'm sure you're a bit curious so here it is guys not knowing every step of the way in achieving your goal is part of the choice of being an entrepreneur just like any artist or sports athlete you may have the vision but how you get there is always the unknown and the mystery. It's just how it is, guys. The only time you see how the dots connect is when you look back with hindsight. That's it. If it feels like this is scary, that's normal. You're not alone. So if you're just getting into being an entrepreneur, trust me, that, that's normal. If you've been in business for a year or more, you know how it is. That's how it is. You know, us crazy fools run businesses being scared. So step 13, track progress, guys. This is another important one. I've been guilty of not doing this, but I really upped my game this past year. Just like an athlete or a seasoned entrepreneur, you must track your progress if you wish to improve. You need to know where you are, where you were, and your vision provides where you're headed, not necessarily the how. So do more of what works, drop what doesn't work, just get rid of it. You've got to become more more cutthroat about what you get rid of yeah v very i would say conscious in your ability to to act very fast so here's the caveat when it comes to marketing and sales make sure you've published at least 50 to 100 offers and ads even videos and content you know and done more than 100 sales calls before you drop those activities because in marketing and sales you can't drop those activities can't stop doing ads can't stop doing content can't stop doing sales that's how a business continues to grow and flourish so hope you take that one in bit of a joke at the end guys so step 14 implement and iterate fast i remember interviewing grant cardone one time and he said and i you know i kind of take this one to heart i still practice it success is attracted to speed guys so iterate fast so what do i mean whether you're winning or whether you've experienced failure not achieved the result that you're you probably hoped for your job is to learn evolve and implement and then repeat yeah so the whole point is if the failures hurt that's normal and again, shift into your alter ego. How would you deal with it as your alter ego? How would you deal with the setback as your alter ego? Now move forward, yeah? So don't dwell on it too long. I often talk to my coaching clients who are business owners, service-based business owners, coaches and consultants about cycles. Not the things that you ride a bike, but cycles, how you cycle through processes in your business. The more you go from idea, implementation, action and results, the better you become. Bruce Lee said it best, here's his quote, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. It's how, it's how many times you go through the cycle, the process and become better. So don't think you win or fail after one Facebook ad, one YouTube ad or video, one funnel, one webinar, one high value sale, one online course or one offer. You've got to keep going, guys. That's the key here. Step 15, coach or mentor. So for me, my first coaches and mentors were books, audio books, YouTube videos, um, following top entrepreneurs, just keeping up to date on their social media activity. The fastest way to succeed, though, is to get a real coach, a real human being, somebody who can advise you. Why, you're probably asking, because they will save you even more time than reading and thinking, oh, I can go figure it out myself now, I've got some ideas. That's the one resource you cannot get back, which is time. It took me a few years to figure that out, but I understand it totally, especially as being a parent, a father, you understand, you know, you, you are really not here forever and you've got to make the most of your life and that includes your business life as well. I've spent approximately a hundred thousand pounds, which is probably like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars on mentors and coaches in recent years. I understand the value of accelerating my knowledge with people who have first-hand experience and can offer me their advice. That's the critical piece here. And it's critical that you have someone who can look at your business with an unbiased view because they will share with you what you need to do in order to go to the next level. Usually, 
a place where you haven't been before because if you're going to the next level you probably haven't been there if you've had a previous successful business and you failed and you're trying to get back there but accelerate and speed up fine but you probably missed something in when you had the failure so by getting a coach or a mentor a real person you're going to save yourself time you're going to save yourself frustration and just trying to you know I would say be Superman or Superwoman, trying to put the S on your chest and, and heal or fix the world alone. You know, even su Superman and Superwoman ended up on the Justice League. They're on a team. So you need people like a cultural mentor who can do that for you. So the lessons here are don't assume you know it all. That's a big one. Be coachable, which is something I often share to my own coaching clients. Les Brown said it best. When you're in the frame, you can't see the picture. Yeah. So here's some examples of famous people who have coaches. So Richard Branson had Sir Freddie Laker as his mentor. Oprah Winfrey had Maya Angelou. You had Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson was his coach. You had Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs was also his mentor. Serena Williams, her coach was Tony Robbins. So if it's good enough for them guys, I'm damn well sure it's good enough for you. Step 16, commit. Okay, the difference between those who make it to those who simply get by, scrape by, is by committing to all of the above that I've already spoken about, so all the previous steps. In short, your vision, you must understand you're not a robot, you are a human being. You're a spiritual being having a human experience, packaged with thoughts, memories, emotions, and all that other crap and baggage in between. And as science has already stated and I've shared with you right at the beginning, remember you're 99.999999% energy and emotions equal energy in motion. Yeah, so you're, you're energy in motion, that's all you are. So this package, when it, when it becomes memorized, i.e. energy, emotions, thoughts, can also become the thing that blocks your creativity and do, it can do it unconsciously. So... Even at your core, there are behaviors that are going to hold you back and you've got to unlock them and you've got to unlearn them daily, which is why I mentioned about meditation right at the beginning. You've got to do this daily in order to win because the way we're wired as human beings is we have a lot of thoughts and the Science Foundation did another survey back in 2005 where they found that humans have on average 60 to 70,000 uh, thoughts and 95% of our thoughts today are thoughts from yesterday and 80% of our thoughts today are, are negative. So when you look at yourself, you're wired to be negative. It's just how we're made up as human beings. So you've got to do these things daily, especially meditation, to clear yourself and get moments of clarity. Look at this for commitment. Jonathan Edwards, he was a famed triple jump world record holder, still holds the world record right now. I think it's 18 meters, 29, something like that. He took 12 years from his first Olympics in 1988 until he finally won a gold medal in 2000. That was 12 years of going to the Olympics. Not when he started training. He'd been training for years before that. So, you know, when you look at it, you've got to commit to it and make sure your business is long term. And yes, he had a coach. His coach was Norman Anderson. So committing to your journey is essential. It's not easy, but it's worth it, guys. So we move on. Step 17, meaning, meaning, what is meaning? Let's have a look at it. So if you're at the point where you are searching for meaning in your life, in your business, here is an easy approach. So Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor from World War II stated that there are three sources of meaning, love, work, and suffering. Love, work, and suffering, yep. If you've never heard this before, it may sound a bit strange. Love, work, and suffering, three. So in life and business, you will find all three and they will mean something to you, yeah? Furthermore, you can use what you find as meaning through your products and services to help others in adversity to find meaning and they will forever be grateful to you for it. So an internal focus will help you to create what you want externally. So find meaning in everything, in your wins, your losses, you know, that's the key thing, guys. Don't dwell on it. Just find the meaning. What did that mean? What does that mean to me? Yeah. Step, step, final one, step 18, R-O-A. R-O-A. What am I talking about? In everything you do, you are the common denominator. 
not your wife, not your husband, not your family, not your friends, and some other person you don't know. You, you are the common denominator. You experience the world through your senses, not another person. So somebody doesn't experience the world for you. You might ask Siri to do things, but you know, it's not you or Alexa or Google. Anyway, and whether you believe science facts that you are mostly energy and not matter, you attract everything that happens in your life energetically from an atomic level right the way through to you being in the real world. It's science fact, guys, everything. So if that means all of the great things that have happened to you, all of the shitty, crappy things that have happened to you, that, that's all on you guys. And if you feel it's not on you, it's a sign. It's a sign, guys. It's a sign that you're giving over your power to others to control, to external events that are out of your control and not you. So you've got to take responsibility, responsibility, ownership, and accountability, ROA, of your life, and you'll find success at a rate where it increases, you'll become luckier, you'll be rewarded higher, and those around you will want more of you, and people will want to seek you out. They'll be like, I want to find that Leon Street, that visionary marketing coach, he's great at marketing and helps people grow their business. Anyway, final point, conclusion, guys. I'm sure you have enjoyed these 18 steps. I've enjoyed taking you through them, but here's where I want to wrap up and just kind of give you some context. If you've enjoyed this video so far and you've not liked it, go smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well, guys. And if you're not following me on YouTube, you're watching this video on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, come join me on YouTube as well. We'll make sure just we're connected on those social media channels where you are following me. Anyway, if you read to the end, and I'm sure, or you've stayed with me to the end even, I'm sure some of what I've at least put in these 18 steps has resonated with you. And really, a lot of what I've shared, and I hope, is that I've shed some insight into my life, my business, and what you can do in yours. It's, it's that simple, guys. Business is not easy because essentially you're not easy. You're a complicated being. And there's a lot of moving parts to the human mind. And this is what's, what keeps you in survival mode as opposed to you know, being in creative mode, which is where things, the magical things happen, success happens. But what I'm saying is that by being in survival mode, it comes packaged with a lot of crap and you become stuck in cause and effect. You live in this kind of linear world. And what you want is the keys to spend more time in the creative mode, which comes pre-packaged with growth, love, health, connectedness, causing an effect where you are the cause, everything about you you are the cause. So that means you can change everything around your world. So the truth is building a successful business that gives you what you want out of life without an in the know somebody, yeah, who is there to guide you is not easy. Building a real business at times is not easy and a successful mentor or coach can make it easier. So that's why I'm here to help guys. That's why I create these videos. That's why I created this particular video. As a visionary marketing coach, I wanna show you the right way to build it, market it, and set it up if you're in business so that you work less and that you can serve more of your clients to a higher level. So if you're set on making this year you know, a year of lasting change and achieving better results. Guys, send me a message, drop me a comment below and I'll reach back out to you. I do check all the comments myself and you know, we can arrange a time to have a quick chat and you know, help you achieve the desired outcome that you'd like to achieve this year. So guys, as I said, if you enjoyed it, give me a like, drop me a comment below this video. If there's something in business that you'd like me to tackle with marketing, sales, operations, reach out to me, drop a comment below to below this video and say, Leon, I would love to know more about XYZ. I've put a lot of videos out on my YouTube channel, also on my Facebook page, which you can check out as well. So if there's something there that you don't see and you're like, I wanna see more, reach out to me, let me know guys. Thank you for watching, it's been a pleasure. Take care, bye-bye.